my name is Tony Wilson and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some different methods of trying to write stories with children. Now what I'm going to show you is for your benefit, not to show to the children straight away. Uh, from the very early stages you would introduce uh, the five questions of who, where, what, why and when. And you get the children, when they're older, when they're getting towards the end of key stage one, you tell them that their job as an author is to tell people how. And this is the writing part. Again, if I can just emphasise that this is for you. And the way that you can get this across is by saying to the children, help, he shouted. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, that's fine. But help, his voice was filled with fear and anger. And you've talked about using feelings them. and they they haven't start to use mentioned. Them. Okay, something else about what, what she's like inside. We've talked about her clothes, uh, something else, a hobby. A hobby, um, what, what, does she, what does she like to do? Heavy boots on her feet, does she like to go for walks? Does she like to play football? We've um, talked about how she looked, but we're just making notes here. Nothing more and nothing less. You know that children, when they write their notes, it winds up being the story. Surrounded by bones, bodies and blood, he knew that he had not won in this battle. All he could see was the chieftain of his warrior clan. He was a boy who was much older than his years, mature, strong in his arms and his heart. But he would never admit to this. But when he thought about his brother and his father, who had died in battle before him, then a tear. A small, salty, silvery tea. It was a small village, but busy. There was a huge shire horse that was pulling a black tar-painted carriage, richer than any that he'd seen inside of this village. It had obviously come from the city, and whoever was inside must have been rich, for the carriage bore a coat of arms of three dogs, teeth bared, tails straight, Pause ready to pounce. He didn't know who it was. And he might have been confused. He might have felt guilty. But it didn't stop his old ways returning, for his fingers itched. We've heard about John Martin. We've heard about the Bard. We've also heard about how Edward I was trying to conquer the whole of the Welsh. But in the middle of all... Uh, here I am outside of the Lang Art Gallery in Newcastle upon Tyne. One of the foremost galleries in the hall of the northeast of England. It was opened in 1904 and has a great variety of artefacts and paintings. And never in all of its 103 year history has anything happened like what happened last night here. A gallery D to be precise. A painting was... Uh, it wasn't stolen, but a painting has appeared on one of the walls. The ever-vigilant front-of-house staff and security staff cannot believe that such a large painting, it is two metres high by one and a half metres wide, has been smuggled inside of this place. The painting could well have been painted by local painter John Martin or by his rival from Bristol, Francis Danby. Sorry, this has just come in. Some exclusive CCTV footage of what happened in the early hours of last night. For 11 years, I have lived in London, ever since I was 17. And it is a good and a fine city, with all of the things that could stimulate a man's mind. But it does not have the grace and glory of the crystal clear waters of the River Tyne running through its streets. I do not visit this place often enough. I wish that I could come here more often, but I seem only to return when there is a funeral in the family. And I have seen too many of those. In the space of the last few years, I have buried my grandmother my mother, my father, and two of my sons. They were barely children. But 
I have the support of my wife, Susan. If it were not for her, then I would have lost all of the will to continue on with my dreams of a life that would be filled with My name is Thomas Buick. And if you do not know of me, then I think that you are a stranger to books. My friends, who have visited many parts of this great country of ours, have informed me that my two volumes of the history of British birds and my single volume of the history of quadrupeds can be seen in every home that they have entered. I feel pleased and proud that from my humble beginnings as a farmer's son, I have touched the lives of so many with my love of the countryside and wildlife. I have also been told that there is not a parlour in this country that does not have upon its wall a print of some description by an artist called John Martin. From a mutual acquaintance, Dr. Thomas Alcock, I have heard that this Martin, like me, is from the North, but he lives in London and has a great many influential friends in the capital. But from my time in that place, London, I can tell you that I could not wait to return to my beloved Cherryburn. He was a fisherman, a vis there was no doubt, living by the side of the sea where the waves would roll and rock, the boats were all ready to go out and catch fish, and that is just what he did. He was tall, he was strong, he was handsome, and every day when he threw out his net, he would always catch fish. No matter where he went, his net was always full. He was strong in his arm, he was handsome in his face, his back was straight. And it wasn't just those women who walk upon two legs who found him attractive. Oh no, underneath the water there would be mermaids, half a woman and half a fish, who would look up through the water and see just how handsome this fisherman was. Now he did have a wife and a horse and a dog, but these mermaids would make sure that they would always fill his nets just so that they could see him standing there, tall and strong, casting out his nets and catching his fish. Now, he had a house, a wife, a dog and a horse, but as we all do, one day he spoke out loud as the sunset was crowded. given the illusion of a coin that's made out of gold. Well, I did say that what it says in the, in the old story is that uh, he was paid with sovereigns. Well, that's what we've just done there. And with shillings. And equally here, I've got a photograph, the right size for a, a blank CD. And over the top of that, you can trace out the picture of this time, it's George the Sixth. And if you look at what's written on the uh, Golden Sovereign, George the Third, well here we are, George the Sixth, and here it's just down to D and G, Dea Gratia, and King of All, Omni Rex. And what you do this time, instead of doing it on top of a piece of paper, within a game, now there's a lot of maths, a lot of science, a lot of logic involved and quite a lot of trial and error when you're trying to design a game with children of the things. And as you can see, I've tried different typefaces, once upon a start, live happily ever after. Here I've if I hadn't shown you how a hard fold gives a, gives a piece of paper some structure and some strength and then you can use that to make a box. Well, this is how you make a house. It's almost the same principle, the only difference being that not all of the folds are equal. Again, you would use a former to help the, the children to make, make the folds in the right place. The same principle applies that you're cutting from the side and in. 
from the side and in. This little girl didn't live in a small house. No, she lived in a huge mansion that was white and wide with gates at its front. And she was a happy girl, generous, kind, but loud. Sometimes people would say that when she opened her mouth, it almost made the short and curly hair on the top of her head move from side to side. Her eyes were small, and so was her mouth, but it was always with a huge smile upon her lips that she would go around. From the darkness to the light, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, all play their part. From the darkness to the light, from the darkness to the light, Friends and family workmates brought the light from the dark For ships and trains and iron, industry and home We pull black diamonds from the earth, all hail to King Paul From the darkness to the light, from the darkness to the light Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers all play their part From the darkness to the light, from the darkness to the light I work on the mine bank picking and sorting the iron ore for Richard Evan. I work for from 6.30 in the morning until 6 in the evening, but I do have an hour off at noon for my dinner. My reward for work is meat or clothes or a little money, perhaps a shilling a month. I like my work very well. I have good health. I do not lose any days. I was never in a day school but I go to Sunday school I try to learn but I cannot read yet. I work at the same time as men I cannot say whether I'm eight years old or not I only go to Sunday school I can say the spelling of two letters I do not know what I get. When I was 15 I've come here from Swansea to work underground for girls at Swansea cannot work as they can here when I worked the levels, helping the miner, I used to bore holes for blasting down the mine and then pick it out of the rubbish or stuff and shovel it and fill it into the tram and help to push the tram off to the mainway and do all the light work, the same as the men did, except in the powder. Now that I'm working on the mine banks, I get seven and sixpence a week for picking, cleaning, stacking the mine and unloading it from the trams. This is all heavy work. Recently, I have married and my husband earns from four to five pounds a month. I regularly go to chapel and Sunday school, but I've never been to a day school, but I cannot read. Not many girls working about the mines can read. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the fireside with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled, snug in their bed, while visions of sugar plums danced in their head. And Mama in a kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew in a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow cast the luster of midday on the objects below when what to my wandering eyes did appear but a miniature sledge and a tiny reindeer the little old driver so nimble so quick i knew in an instant it must be saint nick his charges like eagles so swiftly they came he whistled and shouted and called them by name now Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donna and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the hall, dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky, so up to the top of the rooftops they flew, with a sledge full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, up on the roof, I heard the prancing and dancing of each tiny hoof. As I withdrew my head and was turning around, 
down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot. His clothes were all tarnished in ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had on his back. He looked just like a peddler carrying his pack. His eyes, how they sparkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. He was chubby and plump, a jolly old elf. I laughed when I saw him, in spite of myself, but a wink of his eye and a nod of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. Without saying a word, he went to his work, and he filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying a finger aside of his nose, with a nod of his head, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and they mounted the air like the down of a thistle, and I heard him exclaim, ere he went out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Now you all know me, and you know that I could never look you in the eyes and lie to you. So this story is true. It's as true as these five fingers on my right hand. Now it was the night before the night before Christmas, and seeing as how it was getting very close to Christmas, I knew that it was about time that I bought some presents. And when I say some presents, I mean all of the presents, for times had been very hard inside of the Wilson household. Now where I live is at the top of the river by the mouth of the sea and in that place there are two ways to go into the town. You can either go down by the edge of the river or you can do go down 